Time to take a look at the Disney list. This is where we evaluate a list of something from the Disney parks, whether good or bad. This week, it's the four biggest challenges when visiting the Disneyland Resort right now. Spring 2022, what are some of the biggest challenges at Disneyland? We are going to share them with you. I uh, wanted to mention that the Orange County Register recently sat down and spoke with Disneyland President Ken Potrock. Uh, Ken ended up sharing with everybody that Disneyland Resort is only at the halfway point of reopening and their phased reopening process uh, for the sake of the theme parks and the entirety of the resort coming back online. Uh, still, they have not hired back all of the cast members that they want to hire back. There are still some key experiences that are offline that they wish to bring back. Obviously, we're still waiting to see if magic happens, that parade will ever return, and if we're ever even going to talk about it again i don't know uh but he spoke at length about sort of the things that uh they still want to do and how they are only at the halfway point right now even though you are spending top dollar and paying a premium to come into the disneyland resort right now uh they fully admit they're still fully or they are still in a fully uh reopening process uh in an attempt to make that happen so uh they are still halfway through it and they have a little ways to go halfway as a matter of fact so we're going to check in with our theme park analyst tyler crouch who uh, is going to share his list here for the sake of the biggest challenges when visiting the disneyland resort right now what do you got for us yeah i mean i i think i'm going to start with probably the most obvious one which is uh just the whole park reservation system in general like mm. i mean you can you know Going to Disneyland has changed so much in the past few years. Uh, you know, even even before COVID, I feel like they wanted to make a lot of these changes. And so the park reservation system, for those that don't know, you can buy a ticket to Disneyland for any day you want, but you got you are, you also have to have a reservation. And getting those reservations is not necessarily an easy thing, especially when you are. You know, if you don't really know what you're doing or you want like or you can only go to the park on weekends, that's so that's a really challenging thing of just making sure that you can even go on the day you buy tickets for. I mean, I've seen I've seen people joking around on Twitter like there are like signs literally laid out and you people I guarantee you people show up to Disneyland every day with tickets but don't have a reservation. There's this sign that says there are no reservations available today. Please see a cast member for details. And I'm I'm just like, oh, man, that poor cast member, whoever they are. Like, yeah. um, But it's one of those things where it's tough. It's tough to get into the park for some people on a regular basis, especially if you're paying for like an annual pass or I guess a magic key at this point. You're not guaranteed to even get in you know, the days that you want to get in. So that's something to really keep in mind and kind of to go hand in hand with that. I'm kind of throwing like a secret fifth one in here. Oh. <laughs> um, the Just the whole dining reservation thing is also tough. Like when, cause it's compounded with the, re the uh, park reservation. So yeah. when you don't know when you can actually go to the park and you get penalized for making these uh, park reservations, if you don't show up, you're going to be penalized. So it's hard to know, like, unless you can just plan your whole entire month out, what day you're going to actually be able to go. And in turn, that makes it hard to get dining reservations because they get they get just taken very quickly. And uh, if you don't know, like, you're going to be able to go or not, then getting these dining reservations is not easy. But and I kind of that kind of brings me to my next one, which is and I talked about it a little bit, but the Magic Key program in general makes it tough to get into the parks. Uh, right now, the two top tier passes are sold out. You can't buy them at all. And the bottom tier pass is only for Southern California um, residents. So it's not an easy thing to try and save money at this point, uh, especially when the pass that you're going to spend, you know, over $650 on isn't going to guarantee you these reservations. It's it's a tough thing. If you didn't get your dream key, you know, the top of the line pass, then it's hard to feel like your uh, magic key is that valuable, I feel like. Um, and that's just something they're really going to have to continue to work on. But that brings me to the third one, which is price. I mean, this is like the prices are crazy. Like if you think about a one day thing at a at a at a theme park of all things like Let's say you wanted to go today. It's a Saturday today. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to do both parks. You only get to you only have one day at Disneyland. You want to do both parks. You want to get a park hopper. That right there is $896 without for a family of four 
not including tax. Wow. Then let's say you only have the one day, right? So let's all get Genie Plus because we got to do as much as we can. That's another $80 on top of that, which makes it $976 for a family of four. And then everybody has to go on Rise of the Resistance, right? I mean, Rise of the Resistance is the attraction to do if you're going to Disneyland and you're not going on Rise of the Resistance with your one Disneyland trip a year, you're wasting your time. So that's another $80 on top of that. I mean, it's, it's, it's. Hope nobody's hungry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you haven't even bought any food yet. Exactly. And no then, you know, you. and then, you know, the kids are going to want some Mickey ears or something like, or a t-shirt or whatever it may be. I mean, you're, you're looking at spending quite a bit of money just on one day at some and theme parks. If you get a reservation to get in. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you then can buy that ticket all you want. <laughs> Nobody's claiming you're going to be able to get in on the same day. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And then to top it all off, they have their whole tier system now, which is like, I think there's like five different tiers, which means there's five different prices all throughout the week. And like I said, so today's a Saturday. It's expensive. But um, you're paying more to get a worse product because it's going to be more crowded. Right. So it's just, you know, the least if you pay less, you're actually getting a better day, you know, but not everybody can afford to take a day off of work or take the kids out of school. So they kind of prey on those people. You know, it's a it's a huge bummer. But then the fourth one here, um, it's just a lot of things are also closed right now. Like we've been kind of talking about it the past weeks and we talked about it a little earlier today. Um there's Pirates of the Caribbean is closed. The Finding Nemo submarines are closed. Toontown is closed. There's no World of Color. There's no Fantasmic. You know, uh, they have like Mickey Mix magic on the weekends, I believe, right? But it's it's just like if you are going and spending all this money um, just to see that these things are closed. And Tarzan's Treehouse is closed, yeah. too. <laughs> Still. What the heck is even going on? Since last September. So, what is yeah. going on in that tree? You don't want to know. Yeah. Um, Half of Tomorrowland still closed. I mean, so many of the venues in Tomorrowland are completely shuttered, never brought back, and no real reason, no real rhyme or reason as to why. Did you say Pirates already? Yeah, Yeah, he he started with Pirates, yeah. 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 It's pretty wild to think that so much remains closed and things that certainly feel like they're getting back to normal. However, uh, there are lots of walls up. And uh, now you walk through New Orleans Square, if you want to check out our Disneyland update that we did most recently, uh, it feels like the walls are closing in. There are walls everywhere, not yeah. just yeah. for the sake of eliminating uh, some of the infrastructure that needs to be flattened out around the land, but also now walls have gone up around the platforms for when Fantasmic eventually does come back in a month or two. Uh, so there are even more walls than there were in prior weeks. And so you walk into New Orleans Square, and it just feels like you're, I don't know, in an asylum or something. You know, oh it feels gosh. like yeah. you can't look around and see any of those sweeping views. You want to go dine, say, Tyler, at uh, French Market or over at Cafe Orleans, your views are completely blocked now. Oh, no yeah. wonder the there river. was reservations available. I was like checking this week just to kind of see what was like available. And I was like, there are a lot of Cafe Orleans <laughs> reservations available. That's why. Ah, there and, we go. And, and, and speaking of dining, too, like to top it all off, I'll, I'll include like I'll slip another one in here. Like not... They are like charging either more money or the same prices for smaller portions of food as well. That's yeah, become 100%. a lot more noticeable, yeah. huh? So yeah. I mean, like we we're Cafe talking Orleans. about cafe. Yeah, ca- we we're talking about Cafe Orleans. Like they got you used to get two big honking. Uh, now I'm blanking on. It. I want to say what Monte Cristo. Yeah, Monte Cristo. I wanted to say Croque Madame, which is a completely different kind of sandwich. <laughs> uh-huh. um, you can get that at Be Our Guest yeah. in the mornings. Anyway. Uh, it's 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 just one of those things where you used to get two big giant sandwiches. Now you get one. You get a little bit of French fries on the side. They're they're and they're keeping their prices yeah. very high. You get like a half so. a sandwich that's yeah. deep fried because you used to get like a whole sandwich because it was cut in like a triangle, right? And then now you get sure. half a sandwich with their fries. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that doesn't seem like a good deal, you know. And they charge the same price. Oh, value. Uh, it's yes. the worst, Oh, you know? the value. It's hard. And then especially like with the dining reservations being so hard to come by for a family of four that is has a park hopper ticket, right? And you choose Disneyland as your first, you know, your first park because you don't know what park you want to go to first, sure. right? And then all of a sudden dining pops up for Lamplight Lounge for brunch or something. And then you're like... Oh God! Now I have to cancel my reservation and then go to like and go back and make a reservation. Who knows if that reservation is going to be available by exactly. the time you cancel it and go back in? It's not like an easy switcheroo. So 
it's so stressful. It has further managed to complicate what used to be uh, a much more easier to deal with experience overall. Yeah. And yeah, now there are all these complications and we've heard from the Disney CFO that they planned on reducing the size of uh, portions. Like that was something that came out of her mouth. She we're thought too that fat. would be. That's why. Yeah. That's what they say. Yeah, it'll, <laughs> it'll help all of our waistlines, yeah. she said. Uh, so we've heard it from her. We've also heard it from not only uh, Disney Parks Chairman Josh Tomorrow, but also the presidents of Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Reservations are probably never going to go away. They love having this control, they love having this authority. So get used to it yeah. because this is something that I don't think we will ever see the end of. Um, yeah, a great list, Tyler. And uh, certainly, you know, you bring up the whole idea of how not only is, is value slipping, um, but it feels like so little is open when you're spending more for, say, a Saturday for a family of four. And even though a lot of these things are coming, right, even though we do have on the docket uh, Fantasmic in May and then you have World of Color and you've got Disneyland Forever. So the nighttime entertainment is coming back. But I feel like, you know, we said it here recently, uh, if you are planning on visiting the Disneyland Resort anytime soon, maybe wait until that stuff has returned yeah. because you're not you're, you're still going to pay high prices, but without all of that excess joy uh, that the nighttime entertainment brings. Yeah. I feel like there's never been a worse time to go for like spring break, you know, like it's been, I know like schools kind of split it up. I think a lot of schools had it last week and stuff, but it's just like, this has been the, the worst spring break yeah. for Disneyland ever. I feel like. And so. the hotel prices, like again, like yeah. we didn't really mention that, but they, they are like abusing their power yeah. to charge like four hundred dollars for Paradise Pier Hotel. Got to gouge. It's not. Yeah. It's not worth Nothing it. being <laughs> offered inside that hotel either. We also check on that at our Disneyland update from time to time, and uh, not only table service out of commission, quick service out of commission, bar out of commission, pool totally out of commission. Totally worth four hundred dollars a night, you guys. I tell you, right? It's just so you can have like the long way to walk around because you're not allowed to cut through Grand Californian. Right. So you have to go all the long way around to go into the park, which is kind of like a bummer. And then it's just and everything like again, like if you add like a hotel because the kids really want to stay at Disneyland Hotel. Right. That's like eight hundred dollars a night. Six to six, six to eight, depending on the type of room. Right. That's a lot of money. Find a, find a hotel on Harbor at this point. Yeah. Um, it's just not worth it, at least in my estimation. And, um, you know, good luck. Good luck with all of the finances racking up very quickly when it comes to wanting to go to Disneyland right now for a more diminished sort of experience. Again, more things are coming online very shortly. However, right now, those are some of the biggest challenges. Anything on your list that we missed, uh, add it to our list, add it to Tyler's, that is. Uh, leave it in our comment section. As always, we would love to hear from you. Welcome to this happy place. Welcome.